Hello and welcome to this video on hardening remote desktop services for your environment. This video is primarily going to be based around Active Directory hardening for remote desktop services, although all these settings can be done on a local machine and it's not also just applying to Windows Server 2012 like we have in this uh, test lab. You can apply it to any other version higher going from there. So what we've done so far is we've actually got a scan from Nessus running first before we did any changes. So we just click on here, click on this here, and what you can see is you've got remote desktop protocol, server, man in the middle, weakness, and terminal services encryption level is not FIPS 140 compliant. At the moment, that can expose your machine to various vulnerabilities and weaknesses, and people can try and brute force your remote desktop, <clears throat> especially if you've got it connected uh, outside to the internet, which we always recommend that you don't have remote desktop services exposed to the internet. If you do, try and have it set up uh, against VPN or white label, uh, whitelisted to very specific IPs. Now, if we go back to the Windows Server, and what we want to do is go to Group Policy Management. So just go to Group Policy Management. Oh, my computer's going slow. And then, depending upon your environment, you want to go to your domain, group policy objects, default domain, domain policy. If you like, you can create your own policy just for remote desktop uh, settings. But for us, we're just going to go to edit. Go to computer configuration, policies, administrative templates, Windows components. Windows uh, Remote Desktop Services, sorry. Remote Desktop Session Host. Then go to Security. And in here, you've got three options that we're going to change. We're going to change the set client encryption level. And we're going to enable this and make sure this is set to high level. Click OK on that. And then the next one we're going to use is require use of specific security layer for remote desktop connections. So click on this, click enabled, and change this to SSL TLS 1. And then click OK. And then the last one we're going to do is require user authentication for remote connections by using NLA. Just enable this, click on enabled, click OK, and then that is it. Now you can either wait for group policy to take effect and push out through the domain, or we can uh, just go to a command prompt and then just push out a group policy update slash force if my computer will actually work. And it's not going to, is it? Okay, but you can push that out and then all we're going to do is go back to our Kali Linux instance that we've got Nessus running and then have a look at the scan that has run after I've done the changes. I did this just before just to save some time because it can take quite a while to run the scan. And then if we look at after changes, click on here. Although the scan did pick some additional stuff up we didn't find in the first one, there is no remote desktop errors or, well, no more vulnerabilities for remote desktop weaknesses. There's a lot of exploits out at the moment and weaknesses going out at the moment for remote desktop services. So we recommend that you apply these settings to all your devices and then that will just make your environment a little bit more secure and, you know, just makes it a little bit harder for those malicious attackers to actually take effect. Now we're going to be pushing out a few more videos uh, for best practices and recommendations that we normally see on penetration testing or vulnerability assessments. If you'd like to see any videos on any type of topic, just put a comment in below. Other than that, um, stay tuned. Thanks very much.